Hello everybody, this is Quintina and today I'm going to go over my summoner setup. This video is actually a really big pain to make because you might be thinking since summoner is supposed to be this crazy, feels like playing a piano kind of job that I would have a very strict way, but this is actually one of the more flexible um, setups that I've made and I, I don't like how much talking I'm going to have to do about that. So let's get started! First are shared actions. So limit break goes in this same spot for everybody, it's always here. It's in the double, so that's uh, doing left twice. And sprint, which I'm going to put over here, is my macro 99, which you can see. Sprint. I also have PvP's both there. You don't need it. I like to have it. That's all. And then our rule actions. Swift cast is always here. It's been this way for the healers and all the other magic DPS that I did. And although it's not a rule action, our reses go right next to it. It just any drop that has a res, it goes in that spot. Our party mitigation at all. And our resource. And our anti knockback. These are designated spots that I will try to do for every single job. And so that takes care of our shared actions, at least as far as role actions in general. There's a few others that are shared specifically with Scholar. We'll talk about whether or not we're going to do the same thing. It may be different. RGCDs. The bread and butter of pretty much everything in Final Fantasy XIV Battle. Ruin goes here. A beautiful Ruin 3. And Ruin 2, which is our mobility, goes into our mobility section, which is usually here. Then we've got the dots and the eggies. Now on Scholar, the dot is here. So you might be thinking I would do the same thing, specifically for the instant dot. I thought about it, and then I decided no. Because the dots for Summoner are a bit more like, kind of like the Bard issue, which is that there are other ways to actually keep your dots up mostly called Try Disaster, and then when it refreshes through other means than just this cooldown. And so because of that, while you certainly need it at certain points, it's not as frequent as the Eggy Assaults. And so the Eggy Assaults really do belong on the right side, which tends to be my more frequently used side, especially for uh, rating for bosses, single target bosses. And that would mean that our uh, dots would be on the other side. So Summoner is actually going to have more of a feel like my board setup. Which is a little bit strange, but it works. Then we've got our AoEs. When it comes to AoEs, I have two separate patterns, right? The healers and the physical ranged have their AoEs on the primary bar and the left. Whereas most of the other jobs, whether I've actually made videos for them or not, tend to have them on the expanded, which is left and right together. You might be thinking, since Black Mage and Red Mage, which are also casters, I went with the Expanded, or as I call it, the back, that Summoner would be the same, and I mean, you could, but I won't. And the reason has to do with Phoenix. Because Outburst changes into something else when you summon Phoenix. And you kind of want to see it, you kind of want that visibility, just as a reminder that yeah, you have this thing. And that will go along with our OG series. 
uh, physics will be ignored for the time being. We need to get our ether flow. Single target. AoE. Then we may want to use it to put on some extra damage. Faster. Game flare. Um, put them in the wrong spot. It's this one. This spot. It's a very comfortable spot. For Tri Disaster, it kind of takes up that whole, like I said, bar thing where, oh, I want to have a more primary dot, and so it belongs on the right. Because it's going to be used semi frequently ish. I know the cooldown is a bit big, it's 50 seconds, but, well, summoners know. That kind of changes based on when you activate certain things. And so that means that we've got Bahamut and Bane. So I said that the left side would be for AoE, and I meant that. But this is where it gets a bit tricky. See, if I put Bane, let's say here, then that's going to separate the Bahamuts, specifically the Summon and the Enkindle. And depending on which version of the rotation you do, which, oh my gosh, there are so many different versions, I'm not even going to attempt recording it because I know somebody will be in the comment section at some point telling me that I picked the wrong one, and so I'm just not dealing with that. But depending on different versions that I've seen, some of them use it kind of near each other, and so I don't want them to be separated, and this is a bit awkward, so I thought maybe I could do that. But then what about Physic? Now Physic, kind of useless. I hate to call something useless, I really do, because I remember many times people have called things useless, and what they really meant is, I don't do the content where it's useful, which usually tends to be something like Pass of the Dead, or Solo Challenges, or Eureka, or whatever. But for Physic, the only use it really has is if you're doing very, very low level content, so let's say under 30, and you need to heal, and your healer's not really doing their job. Maybe they DC it or something. And so while you may want it, you may not. It's kind of tricky. The question is really, does it deserve that slot here that it has a scholar? I decided to keep it just because I do like keeping things the same and I do like having access to all of my actions just in case there is that really rare use case where I really do need that one thing. But if you decide you don't want it there, I can completely understand. Because if you don't like it there, but you still want it, you could just put it in the expanded. We'll have plenty of room there. But because of that, Bane, which is an AV, is here. If you find that you're not really using these two close to each other, you could just switch it like this. That's fine too. And that's what I mean about it. it's very flexible, because it really depends on how much you value keeping the hotbars the same as Scholar, and which kind of rotations you're using, and which ones you've actually learned and agree with. It's so... It's up to you. But this is the one that I use. Anyway, now that we're past all that, We've got some extra actions. Our party buff, or at least, yeah, it is our party buff, goes right here, which is where we have other party buffs. Whether it's Scholar Change Stratagem or Red Mages and Bolden, you know, this is our party buff section. And for self buff, I usually put it here, but in Kindle is not 
zap yourself up, but it kind of is sometimes. It depends on how you view it. But anyway, it really doesn't matter. So I'm going to put the kingdom right here, just because it's a comfortable spot. I don't find the keypad lab to be very comfortable. And I'm going to put Death Flare and Dreadworm Trance on the face button, because I mean, you want them to be accessible. You use them fairly frequently, despite that they have rather long cooldowns, because Red one is 55 seconds, and this is based on it as well. So that leaves our pet commands and pet summons. Which admittedly, you are not using a whole lot of times when you're fighting. You will use them, but you're not using them every GCD or every other GCD. At least I hope not. And so, what do we do with them? For Scholar, they were put on the expanded in the back, because why not? We don't really need them to be visible. We use them every once in a while. So the ones that I sh I didn't put everything for Scholar because it just wasn't necessary for the fairy. Like, for example, there's no reason for Scholar to have sick. There just isn't. But Summoner is different. So we'll put a few down. Place goes here. Heal. Stay and stay. This leaves sick, away, and guard. You might be thinking I'd put them all down, and I certainly could if I wanted to. But do I need to? Sick, definitely. You want it. But for guard and away, I mean, you don't really need them. And the reason is this. If you're just trying to change pets, you're going to use your summon. If you're trying to stop your pet from attacking, you can use steady. So you don't really need to put your pet away, unless there's some other very, very niche reason. So we don't need this. We'll just put it on the side to show that we don't need it. So what about guard? Well, the thing is, sick itself is not a status. Your pet is either going to be in steady status or guard status. If you put your pet into steady, you use the steady button. By default, usually it ends up in guard. If you use sick, what it does is it will order your pet to attack, and then it will put your pet into guard status. So sick itself is a guard status. It's just, it's a guard status where you actually tell it, hey, go attack first. But after that, technically speaking, your pet is attacking because now that you've gotten the aggro, because your pet attacking gives you aggro, it's actually considering you to be attacked and it's actually guarding you. So, you don't really need guard. If you have sick. Because if you get attacked while you're in study, you can just sick, and now you'll be guarded. So that leaves our summons. You could put them in the back, in those three slots that are available, especially if you decided to keep Physic up front. If you didn't, then you can't put all three of them there. Or you could put them in the double, which is where I put it, just because I'd like to see them. So that way, if I do need to switch it, I remember exactly where it is, I don't have to rely on mem muscle memory, I can just use my eyes. Summon. Go here. Like this. And some of you might be thinking, hold on, hold on. He frits you more often. How come he gets a D-pad slot? An uncomfortable one at that. While the lesser used ones... And this order doesn't matter. Get an action button. Well, simply because my style doesn't use double left very often. It's used for when it breaks emergency reses and potions. Whereas doing double on the right is something I do a lot. And so you'll have plenty of muscle memory if you use my setups. 
to just do this, it shouldn't feel like it's really an effort. And it just makes sense that Ifrit, which is used more for bosses, would end up on the more common side. And so that is my setup. But I mentioned plenty of ways that you could change it according to your priorities. It's summary time! On the right, we've got Ruin 3, Egg Assault 2, Egg Assault, and Ruin 2. On the D-pan, Try Disaster, Faster, Energy Drain, and Bane. Left side, Outburst, Bio 3, Miasma 3, Physic, optional, and Kindle Bahamut, Pain Flare, Energy Siphon, and Summon Bahamut. On the double on the right, we've got Death Flare, Ether Pact, Lucid Dreaming, and Dreadful Trends. And on the D pad, we've got Enkindle, Addle, Surecast, and Summon 3. On the, D on the double, but on the left, we've got Swiftcast, Resurrection, Summon, Summon 2, Limit Break, and 3 slots for potions or other changes you want. On our expanded, left and right together, we've got Sick, Place, Heal, Stay, Steady, and 3 slots for if you want to change the location of Summon or Physic. And that's that. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Summoner's a lot of fun. And I will see you for the next video. Bye-bye.